Hello, 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 my baker friends. It's me, Ellen, the crazy. All right, so I want to talk about those of you who are beginners, who are thinking, what do you mean dough cycle or dough course? I thought I'd just press a button and walk away from my bread machine. What's this dough business? Why would I want to take the dough out of the bread machine when the bread machine will bake the bread? You are absolutely right and absolutely wrong. <laughs> so the bread machine is designed to mix, knead, rise, punch down, rise, and bake your loaf of bread. And if you want to make a loaf of white bread or a loaf of wheat bread or a loaf of a lot of different kinds of bread, anything you can imagine, you absolutely can put your ingredients in your bread pan, go over to the bread machine, mine's over there, that's why I'm pointing, <laughs> and press whatever your basic or wheat setting is on your bread machine and press start. It's not quite set it and forget it because you do have to check your dough about five to seven minutes in of kneading to make sure it's not too wet or too dry. Too dry will look dry and crumbly. Too wet um, will be sticky, gloppy. There will be wet dough pooling around the bottom of the paddles. And if you stick your finger on it, like the dough will come off on your finger. That means you need to add a little more flour. And when I say a little, I mean try a tablespoon or so, let it knead another few minutes, do it again. It should be tacky, but not sticky. And the goal is a smooth, roundish dough ball. Um, if it's too dry, it's obvious you add more liquid. A little bit at a time, just a shh, splash, like a tablespoon or two. Wait, see how it goes a couple minutes later, recheck. Okay, but basically your machine is set it and forget it, except for that one part. However, bread machines cannot make dinner rolls. <laughs> they cannot make cinnamon rolls. They cannot make crescent rolls. They cannot make pull apart rolls. They cannot make uh, hamburger buns and hot dog buns. They, they can't shape them. They're, they're not that good. They're pretty good, but they're not that good. They only bake loaves of bread. Big, beautiful loaves of bread, yes. The other thing they can't do is they can't egg wash. They can't let you egg wash and sprinkle something on top. I suppose if you catch it when it begins to bake, you could do that. I've never done that. That's up to you. But the reason for using the dough course or the dough cycle, my, my bread machine calls it a course. A lot of people call it a cycle, it's interchangeable. So if I keep changing it back and forth, that's why. The reason to use the dough cycle is if you want to do the following. You want to make rolls, cinnamon rolls, uh, crescent rolls, hamburger buns, those things I listed a minute ago, or if you prefer to shape your loaf to bake in the loaf pan of your choice. A lot of people like um, to use a Pullman pan. Um, if you haven't seen them yet, and I don't have one because I don't prefer that myself, but it has very straight sides and a lid and it makes perfectly square bread. People, I guess, like to have that for perfect square sandwiches that fit in lunch boxes easily and things like that. I, I don't have that and I don't that's I don't have that um, I have several loaf pans of different sizes that will all fit a two pound loaf some are shorter so that the loaves come up higher shorter and deeper some are longer and skinnier I prefer different loaf pans for different breads and I like to do toppings like egg wash with seeds or sugar or any number of things I also like to make cinnamon rolls and hot dog buns and hamburger buns and all those other things. So in order to do those other things other than bake a plain loaf of bread, you need to use your dough course or your dough cycle. It's not 
as hard as it looks. And I have all the videos here in my YouTube channel that you can see all the things I've made by using the dough cycle. All it means, the dough cycle means, and I just clarify this with my husband, the videographer earlier, because he was even confused. The dough cycle, <laughs> he's nodding yes, that was his way of nodding yes, by shaking the camera. The dough cycle means that your dough will mix, knead, and rise. But instead of then starting to bake, it beeps, it's done. Then you take the dough out and you shape it, your choice of whatever dough you made for whatever you're making, any of those things I listed already a bunch of times. That's all it is. It means that the bread machine doesn't bake it in a loaf. It means you take it out and you shape it to your heart's desire. That's all the dough cycle means. It is nothing to be afraid of. I know when I first started using my newer bread machines and I had never done dough, it made just dough before, but I thought I've seen all these other people make all these beautiful rolls. I'm like, well, how are they doing that? And I found out they just set their machine to make dough instead of baking it, form it. You do one more rise after you've shaped and you bake it. It's not at all difficult. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. So what I'm going to do right now, I have my ingredients for my French bread loafies that I've made before. I'm not going to show you the whole thing only because I have another video on this recipe, but it happens to be the recipe I need to make today because next weekend I'm having company and I plan to make garlic bread. So that's why I'm doing it. So I'm just going to pop the water in Me to move this okay and the one thing i just wanted to show you is if you have if you are going to use both oil and honey the easiest way to, for the honey to get all out um, of the cup so i've already weighed this olive oil i've teared this again and now i need 32 grams of honey so now it's easier if it goes into the oil and I have to be careful. Don't want to add too much. Oh, we're so close. There we go. Well, 32.7, that's all right. And then if it doesn't make a liar out of me, all the honey will pretty much come out. Although once in a while, oh, see, see, it's mostly going. Although, oh, no, see that drop? is coming out <laughs> come on come on there it goes there it goes all right well close enough because we had 0.7 left over i'll go with that and my hands are sticky so yeah, it's really fast. All right. so i have my water and my honey and my olive oil i'm going to pour in the bread flour again this recipe is for my french bread and I always make it in these mini loaves. And you can find this recipe here on my YouTube channel. All right, I need salt, always goes on the left for me. Sugar always goes on the right for me. And the last thing I need is my yeast, which I never ever keep out of the freezer for longer than it takes to measure. So I'm gonna tear that out zero and I need nine grams of yeast oh, getting closer it's harder to take some out than it is to put it in so I tend to go a little slower come on there we go all right. You notice how I have this weird thing where I don't even put the yeast container down. It goes immediately back in the freezer. All right. And have to make a little well in the flour. You can do it with a spoon or your finger or whatever. You put the yeast in there. 
So the last thing I'm gonna show you until later is if you have my particular bread machine, how to set it for dough. So I'm walking over here. Make sure it's in there. I have to plug it in, excuse me. All right, and then I have it memorized because I pretty much always use dough, is that on this machine, dough is course 11. So I arrow up. So there's dough. I don't know if it, does it say dough? can't see it. It just says complete time 2.30 and that is not a countdown clock. That's actually the time on the clock. It's 12.41 right now. It takes about 90 minutes to make dough. That's because there's a 30 minute rest cycle or rest course or rest portion. Um, it warms up the ingredients. Your bread machine may not have that rest time and so your dough cycle will probably be closer to just one hour. Pressing start, and it's going to rest for, like I said, about 25, 30 minutes. When it starts kneading, I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. I'm going to come and look at the dough, make sure it is not too wet or too dry, and then I'm going to let it go. And at 2.30, I'm going to have dough to make whatever I need, um, which is today the French bread mini loaves. And I will show you what the dough looks like but I'm not gonna go through the whole process because there's already a video on that. So now that I see that it has formed a really beautiful dough ball, it's just tacky, but not sticky. That's exactly what you want. Now I can kind of walk away till the dough is done. Ta-da! So you can see that word add above the time. That's the add beep, and that is when you add raisins, seeds, chopped nuts if you do that, chocolate chips. That's the right time to put it into the dough. It, and uh, that's pretty much all you need to know. Screen now. reads rise. Sorry, that noise is from my one of my other bread machines going. I'm making something else. And you can see that it's rising a lot. It's been rising for a while. This is French bread, by the way. My machine switches from time the dough or the bread will be ready to a countdown at the 30 minute mark. So I have seven minutes left for the dough to be ready and that's when I will take it out and continue. the last minute. And uh, as soon as it beeps, I will take out the dough. I'll just pull the bread pan out. It's not hot because it never baked, so you don't need oven mitts to do that. And uh, show you what the dough looks like, and then you'll know what to do next time if you wanna use the dough course or dough cycle. Waiting for that done beep anytime. <laughs> there we go. So at this point with my machine, I hit cancel and then I unplug it. Okay. So the dough is done, as you know, and it's risen up nice and puffy. I'm gonna take it out and walk over to the island. I'm going to Shake, oh. <laughs> shake, shake. Make sure both paddles are still in the bread pan because sometimes there's one in the dough. I'm going to take them out before I do anything else. I fill it with soapy water or just fill a little bit. And that over there because you want to make sure that none of that dough dries and gets sticky because it's going to be a hard time getting off your bread machine. Now, this is a little bit sticky, this dough, because it has the honey in it. Not terrible, but... So, if I was making a loaf of bread, and I could, if I was making a loaf of bread, 
look at it. It's almost in the shape of a loaf right now. It's not that difficult. So if I had a loaf pan, instead of my mini loaf pan sitting right here, I would just kind of go like this, pick it up, plop it into the loaf pan, and that would be it. That would be it. I would put it in the oven to rise, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then I would egg wash it and bake it. I happen to be making mini loaves because that's what I use for garlic bread and I'm having company soon. I'm going to make garlic bread. But if this was a loaf, you just kind of, <laughs> okay? If this were hamburger buns, you'd go to the my hamburger gun video, but you make circles, you smash them, you let them rise, you bake them. If I was making cinnamon rolls, I would divide it into three sections, roll it out, spread it with butter, sprinkle cinnamon sugar, roll it up, cut, 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 put the rolls. So just depends on what you want, but that's what dough, dough course or dough cycle is for. Um, when I let things rise, no matter if it's a loaf or a rolls or anything that I've made, I always turn on my oven for one minute at the lowest temp and turn it back off. And while I'm not ready to put this in the oven for its final rise, we're going to walk over to the oven so I can show you what to do. So we're pretending that I'm gonna have something to put in here to rise. I turn on my oven, I put in 170 because that's the lowest temp, press start and immediately set a timer for one minute. I do not preheat the oven all the way to 170. All I am doing is ever so slightly warming the oven. When this gets to zero and the timer goes off, the timer gets turned off and the oven gets turned off. Do not let the oven go more than one minute because you will have too hot of an oven and you will kill your yeast and your bread or your rolls or whatever you made will go. <laughs> you don't want that. So we're at 25 seconds. I'm just going to pretend that it's at one minute. I'm going to turn off the timer. I'm going to turn off the oven. Okay. That's all you do for rising. When it, and I do that for 45 minutes. When it comes out, when it's ready, take it out. Then I heat the oven to usually 350. And that's what I bake it. And it th usually things bake, depending on how big they are, like the rolls will bake for about <coughs> maybe 14 minutes. So we're gonna go back over here and I'm gonna start making my mini loaves. I have to cut this in 18 parts. I'm not going to keep you because you don't need to watch it. And if you really wanna see that, you can see it on the video where I made the French bread loafies. These are on the other video, of course, but I put them in that slightly warmed oven to rise for 40 to 45 minutes. I take them out at 40 minutes and then I preheat the oven and I've egg washed them. You can see that they have that beautiful kind of golden brown. Um, you don't have to egg wash. That's just a, a personal choice. Um, but if you want to sprinkle seeds or sugar or anything on top of any breads or rolls, the egg wash is kind of your glue. Um, so they doubled in size, in, you know, in that slightly warmed oven where I turned on the oven to 170 for one minute and turned it back off again. And then when they were done rising, I took them out, egg washed them, preheated the oven to 350, and these bake in about 14 minutes. But the other bread that I made is a full-size bread, a challah, so that bakes for longer. But that's dough cycle, guys. I hope that this all makes sense to you. Um, in the description, I will include every single solitary detailed step that you could ever need, but guess what? Once you do it once or twice, you'll never need the instructions again because it's just easy. You take your dough out when it's done, you shape it how you want it, you let it rise one more time, usually for about 45 minutes, you bake it. <laughs> it's, it's that's That's all it is. I won't say it's easy as pie, it's easy as bread.